How's it going folks, Jerem Adrian here, welcome back to the channel and to the first vlog of 2020. It's been a while since I've done one of these and guys, take a final look around. The backdrop, the video quality, the audio acoustics, just basically a video recorded like this with the webcam because this will be the final time, absolute final time, that I'll be recording a video like this in this home because I am moving officially out of here next week and I'm exhausted. It's what I've been busy with since the end of November leading up into the new year and of course this week dealing with everything, moving furniture, getting new furniture, packing, sorting stuff out. Oh man, what a headache, but I'm really looking forward to it. So those of you guys on my Patreon, hey, I'm going to have a house tour behind the scenes. I'll show you guys how I'm planning to set up my workstation and my recording station and everything for YouTube moving forward the year ahead. So stay tuned for that. Now for this video, this vlog, first what we're going to do, we're going to take a brief look back at 2019. I want to talk about some stuff that I didn't get a chance to say toward the end of 2019, like uh, my MMO game of the year or things like that, my non-MMO game of the year. And then toward the end, I want to feature some of your comments that I've been seeing uh, in December that you guys have been leaving on the YouTube channel, on my Facebook page, and on my Discord as well. So let's get to it. First of all, let's talk about the new year. All the stuff that's been announced so far for MMOs has been pretty encouraging. So we know that the year ahead is going to be filled with some awesome games. Things like New World coming out in May, of course. We've had a lot of stuff, gameplay reveals for Magic Legends already. This week itself, we'll have the Elder Scrolls Online revealing their new season. World of Warcraft is 8.3 out. So I'm looking forward to playing a Volpera or Mechanome. I'll decide that once I've moved into my new place. And at the end of the month, of course, we've got Guild Wars 2 in their new episode. And next week, Temtem's launch as well. So in January, it's already looking pretty good. The rest of the year can't be that bad. I, I think we're in for a pretty great year. Now, this is the part where I usually do predictions for the year ahead. I'm going to skip this entirely this year because last year's predictions turned out to be disastrous. None of it came through. The Kickstarter MMOs completely effed me over, and I'm not going to go through that again. So we'll just wait and see. I cover news weekly now on a weekly basis, so we'll be up to date on whatever's coming. I'll keep you guys informed. You have my promise in that department. So let's talk about 2019 then. What a year. Insane. I worked my ass off in 2019 to give you guys more videos and I hope you guys enjoyed it. I want to thank you guys, of course, for staying with me throughout the year and all the years that you guys have been here for. And I appreciate all the feedback and, you know, being able to share the experience and the journey through some of these MMOs, the sharing of information and opinions on this channel. And I value that the most. You guys have been absolutely fantastic. Thanks so much for being here, truly. I put out more videos in 2019 than I did in 2018 and 2017. So, yeah, and I think majority of that came down to news drop videos, which has been a revelation. <laughs> you guys love the news drop videos. Again, thanks for the feedback there, and uh, that's going to continue to 2020. I can assure you of that. So let's talk about Game of the Year then. Start typing in the comments. I want to know which was your favorite MMO launch of 2019. The MMO you spent the most time in in 2019 or your MMO game of the year in 2019. So while you guys type that out, let me explain mine. For sure, Final Fantasy XIV will be the MMORPG that I think I had the most fun in in 2019 and spent the most time in. So Shadowbringers was going to launch mid-year 2019 and I said very early on in the year on a live stream or a vlog, I can't remember, that... I was going to be going back to Final Fantasy XIV, having been away for two years, and I was going to live stream every weekend my journey from the post-base game MSQ, I think it was patch 2.2 or 2.1, all the way up to Shadowbringers, and that's exactly what I did. I did that for three months straight, I think, and wow, what a blast. Just being able to see the game go from strength to strength with each expansion, Evansward, through Stormblood and then eventually Shadowbringers, which in itself was one of the best expansions MMO-wise that I've experienced. And I'm not exaggerating. I, it's the most memorable one. When I think of which content drop in 2019 
stuck out the most or what's the one that comes to your head most frequently when you think about it and it has to be Shadowbringers for me the story content the way they wrote it the characters that stood out the group content and of course the post Shadowbringer patch um, which introduced like the near automator raid and stuff like that really memorable stuff that Square Enix managed to pull off and I tip my hat off to them because I was you know initially at the very beginning pretty doubtful that I would be a returning long time player like I was going to commit to the game and pay my subscription if converted me now it's definitely one of those games where I'd be like yeah I'm going to be on the sub because I'm looking forward to everything new that comes out after this because I'm so invested in my character now ever since I changed my class to my job from samurai to a dancer combat has become a non-issue I like many didn't like the GCD slow combat all that yada yada stuff and the dancer has just changed the gameplay for me pretty much so final fantasy 14 all around i had the most fun in in 2019 of course there's going to be like honorable mentions next up will be the elder scrolls online of course with the season of the dragon something new that they've tried for dlcs and uh three dlcs in a chapter all around the same story new concept pve story i thought was great but if you guys watch my recent video in ESO, I think there's lots of areas that they can improve on to perhaps, you know, win not just myself, but a lot of players back full time to the game. So again, I'm looking forward to seeing what your MMORPG game of the year was or the game that you spent the most time in or had the most fun in in the comments. Go, go, go. So uh, next up, let's talk about non-MMO game of the year. Now, plenty of games came out last year, which was noteworthy of being highlighted as the best game unfortunately for me because i put out so many videos and i've covered so many mmos in 2019 i did not get enough me time essentially to explore other genres uh there was this one couple of weeks i think mid-year where i lost my internet access for a you know a prolonged duration so i just picked up the nintendo switch and I browsed the eShop, and there was this game right there, Fire Emblem Three Houses. Bought it, played it, and it's my game of the year, non-MMO. It's insane how this happened. I've never played a Fire Emblem game before. It's uh, The game I'm referring to is Fire Emblem Three Houses, which is the latest installment in a long-running strategy franchise. It's a Japanese um, RPG. Good story, lots of characters. It's about three houses where you know you come in as sort of like a teacher and uh, you train them, you watch your students grow, and then the story goes into phase two and then war breaks out between the three houses and there's four different endings. One of them, really sad, I actually cried, which is insane to admit, but it's a fantastic game. If you guys like strategy, if you guys like JRPG, Check out Fire Emblem Three Houses. That's my game of the year, non-MMO. Okay, let's get into your opinions now. The comments that you guys have been sharing on the YouTube channel and everywhere else. I want to get through some of these as quick as possible because I did capture a few. So let's start with this one, Serpro5. And the point that I want to highlight here is uh, you do great work. Thank you. Um, any chance you might be interested in doing some mobile MMO coverage, even if it's a second channel, would love to see it. Uh, first of all, Serpo, thank you so much. I really appreciate all the feedback that all of you guys have been saying about the news videos. It you know makes the work that I do more rewarding. If I know that you guys are having fun watching it and if it's actually informative. So about mobile MMO coverage, I think you guys are starting to see more crossover now. I think mid-year it was, the ratio was 80-20. 80% PC MMO news, 20% mobile MMO. The last couple of months of 2019, it was you know a lot closer. It was like 60-40 because a lot of games, especially big IP names, were coming over to mobile. We got BDO Mobile launching, and then there was the Warhammer Odyssey, Final Fantasy 15 just announced a mobile game. So with me, and I think I said this in the comment that I replied to you as well, like I don't discriminate between platforms. If it's MMO, it's MMO. If it's important and substantial, and I think people need to know this, you will hear about it. I don't cast away mobile games, even though I may not like playing mobile MMOs on a mobile phone. That doesn't mean I will not give it the attention that you know it deserves, or I think it deserves. That's my stance. That's how I want to run the content on my channel, and I'm sticking by it. For a second channel, I did say I was. I may think about it if there's a higher demand for it. 
and not just mobile MMOs, but maybe different genres entirely or, or a different format, maybe like a podcast or something more dedicated to a vlog. Once I have the money to upgrade my camera, maybe and do something different there, there could be that. But my priority right now is to move into my new place, get settled down, continue pumping out videos that are of quality that you guys want to watch. And then uh, I'll revisit this again. So thanks for your comment there, Server5. Let's move on. All right, this one, base. What's the point in 250 versus 250 player fights anyway? In Guild Wars 2, it's just a mess. One big pile of players trying to AOE down, the other big pile of players. You can't even see your character. So this is a comment about RVR, which is realm versus realm type PvP modes. You see it in Guild Wars 2, you know, tri-faction fighting it out in a persistent map. So I can't speak for everybody here, but you know, the point that, what's the point for me anyway? My first MMORPG was the Lord of the Rings Online. I played that for 10 years. And um, in that game, PvP was in the Edmors, which is a persistent map, two factions. You got the Creeps, which are the the army of Sauron, your uruk orcs, spiders, whatever, versus the free peoples of Middle-earth, elves, humans, uh, dwarves. So it was basically Zerg fights. That's what RVR is all about. And why I really loved it is because it's just a real rush fighting in big, huge battles. And unfortunately, the performance issues is always going to be part and parcel with RVR type games. Lag and latency, especially like me, I'm in Malaysia, Southeast Asia, so connecting to the US servers is always going to be ping issues. But I take it anyway because i have it's my favorite RVR mode for several reasons. I've already mentioned, you know, the rush. But then there's also this kind of sandbox type element of player-driven narratives that take place. For example... In the Moors, this used to happen a lot in the on the Riddermark server, which is now closed. It no longer exists. I used to be on that server. So every time we go out to the Moors, there's two big factions. On the Freep side, there's going to be a commander, a leader, a raid leader on the Creep side, the same thing. And we'd see these rivalries happen every often. Like on our side, our leader was a real douchebag. Like he, he uses ambush tactics, fights very cowardly, would pull the fight into narrow spaces only to jump. And uh, we won a lot of battles like that. And the creeps hated it, so their commander was trying to counter it with his own tactics. And you know, there was intense hatred and rivalry and forum bitching and world chat bitching, and it became a, it became almost like a drama. The fights were fueled around this rivalry, and those of us that were involved in the raid, we took sides obviously, and it just fueled us to go on even more. We wanted to know who would win this particular weekend, who's going to steal the relic, who's going to go into the DG, which is like an underground area in Edmores, and you know get the boss buffs. And every week there was something happening with this plot lines involving real players, and that's what I love about RVR. There's this potential for untapped player-driven stories and rivalries that just enriches the fights and every time you're in a zerg you get a rush adrenaline just flows through you and i've been lucky enough to lead a lot of these raid fights towards the end of the raid mark server um you know i being a leader out there in this zerg fights completely different than being a follower it's about knowing all, all the classes and their capabilities at your disposal and knowing how to call out targets and you know, it's, it's just a really fun thing that you will not find in your normal battleground. It's just not there. And I play a lot of MMOs like that. And for me, RVR is always going to be or has a special place in my heart in terms of a favorite uh, PvP mode. But that's only for me. For those of you that, you know, want to chip in with why you guys prefer or like RVR type PvP modes, feel free to leave them in the comments section below. Next up, why do you never cover Pantheon Rise of the Fallen? You cover a lot, and that's why I love this channel. You're doing a great job. Keep it up. Thank you, Jingo. And, uh, you know, the first part of the question, why do you never cover Pantheon? Or similarly for new shops, why don't you cover this or that? Guys, I just want to make it clear right now, there's no such... I don't do preferential treatment whatsoever. If I didn't cover something, it's either because there, there wasn't anything substantial enough or something I didn't deem uh, noteworthy enough for you guys to know about. Or the other scenario is I completely missed it, which will happen from time to time because at any given week, there's so much to cover. And, you know, I have a tough job of narrowing it down to the 15 different stories that I think is going to be good enough to make the news drop. So I see this comment a lot. You can just replace Pantheon with any other game out there and this comment will pop up a lot. And again, it's not intentional if I miss something. 
it's usually because either it's not substantial or it's an honest mistake on my part. But I will do my best to make sure that comments like this don't appear as often. Next up, Gamer Boy, and I did say I would answer this in a vlog. Uh, curious, how the heck do you cram and keep up with all this info for all these games? Seems like a ton of work for one dude, while others have many people contributing. Thanks for the updates, my man. Thank you, Gamer Boy. Yes, it's a lot of work for one person. Uh, you know, writing the scripts, recording the video, rendering it, cutting up the audio, doing the thumbnails, writing the descriptions. But you know what? I wouldn't trade it for the world. I love what I do. So with the news process with all these news drops it's a daily thing for those that don't know i'm a freelance writer and i contribute mmo articles to websites and things like that so really my process starts from a monday and it never ends until the following monday i'm always looking out for news daily either via news wires or uh, i'm also mail looped into the official mailing list for a lot of these mmos and their pr departments so i will get um you know news and stuff like that and if it's a really dry week, I will go and check out, uh, you know, different news sites, MMORPG.com, Azibly, and of course, I will credit the sources where I found them. So there's many different ways where I get my news, and then it's all about compiling it. And the most important thing and the most difficult thing is summarizing it in compact bytes so that you guys can process it in a minute or less. So that's what I try to do. I try to keep each segment as short as possible, just giving you the main important points so that within just a minute, you guys know all that's going on with a particular game. That's my challenge that I do on a weekly basis, a daily basis even, and I enjoy that. And hopefully you guys enjoy it too. And that's it guys. I'm gonna bring this vlog to a close now. I think I've gone on long enough. And uh, hopefully, hopefully the internet in my new place will be set up by the time I'm moving there so that I can continue putting out videos and uh, yeah, I think I've got one more news drop to go this weekend before I officially shift houses. So again, I want to thank everybody for being with the channel this far. If you've been here since the very beginning, thank you so much for all the support. And uh, I'm looking forward to 2020, the year ahead. There's going to be tons of coverage, tons of reviews and news videos. Just expect the same thing, really. And uh, maybe I'll experiment with some new content as well. So if you've got any feedback about the channel and things that you'd like to see or you know anything at all, Feel free to leave it in the comments section. You can head on over to my Discord channel. Link is in the comments there where you can share your thoughts. And also my Facebook page. Now, for those of you guys that love what I do and want to support the work that I do, you can check out my Patreon and you can pledge and support there for as low as a dollar or whatever. Buy me a coffee. And uh, I would truly appreciate the support, you guys. Otherwise, it's been fantastic. I absolutely love covering MMORPGs and I can't wait to see what 2020 has in store for us to experience together. So that's it for me. Hit the like button, subscribe to the channel for more MMO goodness. I'll catch you guys in the next video. Once again, I'm Jerome Adrian, and I thank you guys for being here and for watching.